So the the title of this message is Walking Through Fire, right? So that's what I titled this message. And uh, the reason uh, is, although it's going to be uh, a scripture from the Old Testament, right? I believe that the way how these people from the scriptures handle the situation, okay? is very much valuable for us on how God works in their life. Okay? And uh, many of you or probably all of you know about the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Right? So we are going to look uh, at their life example. Okay? So before going into that, a little bit of a background. Right? So Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the King, King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Okay. So he built, he made a golden image. Okay. He made a golden image and he commanded all the people to bow before the image and worship. And this image that he built, it resembles other gods. It's not a god of uh, Isaac, Jacob and Abraham. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Right. So that's the command that he had given to the people. And anybody who did bow down to the image, you know what? They were killed. And they were, how were they killed? They were put in the fairy furnace. Right? A furnace. And that's how the commandment went into the, uh, the community where they were living and the people there. Right? So that's the background. Okay? So now. Probably everybody were obeying the commandment and bowing down to the image. Now this image what I'm talking about, right? This image what I'm talking about, you could probably relate that to something different, right? So let's say that image could be an anger. So let's say like your, your anger is something that's part and parcel of it, right? And when you get into a situation, are we bowing down to that anger and saying that and you're basically manifesting that anger within you, right? Or are we, no, we know that that's a big area that we have and you're trying to stay away from that because that's a Lord's will, right? Not to be angry, but to be gentle, right? With love, with care. That's what God wants us to do. Not to be communicating or being in a way that we kind of are angry over something okay so that could be an uh, image that you might be bowing down to right so what are the other things any worldly act or frustration or name it there's so many things which is not of God that you can think that as an image okay I'm going to draw it parallel as we go through this that's the reason I'm mentioning this okay now Daniel 3 14 15 so King Nebuchadnezzar, at this point of time, he has commanded the people that they need, he needs to, everybody have to bow down and when they hear the music, they need to bow down, otherwise they're going to be killed, right? That's what has gone in. Now, from Daniel 3, 14 to 15, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image? Okay, because here Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they refused to bow before the image. Okay, they refused to bow before the image because they know that image represents something else. The image represented something that is not of God. Right? So they refused to bow before the image, although the king was the highest authority in that land, right? They refused to obey his order. Okay, because they had faith that their God, who's their God? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can deliver them. Okay, so that's where they put their faith on. So Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, see now, Nebuchadnezzar is giving a second chance for him, right? I, see, when I was reading this, I could relate to the tribulation time, right? The the end times, <laughs> right? What happens in the end time, right? So 
there's a grace period, but then the antichrist time when it comes, they come and say, say, hey, you have to get the seal on your forehead, right? right? You have to get the seal on your forehead. Is that right? So, and then what do you do? So, something like that, a second chance, right? So he comes and say, hey, now, if you are ready at the time, now, if you, now, if you are ready at the time, you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, right? And psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music and you fall down and worship the image which I have made. So when you hear the sound of those music, you fall down to the image and worship. Okay? If you do that, then it's good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fairy furnace and who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Okay? So you see here, Nebuchadnezzar now challenges the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Right? Who can come and save you guys when I put you into the furnace? Right? There's nobody. Nobody can save you. And that's the kind of a situation that we see here. So now you see here the king questioning. And the, so now you see the king threatening uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego saying that hey, if you don't bow, you are going to die. Okay? Now what happens? Daniel 3, 16-18 Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in the matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Okay, see the kind of uh, the courage and boldness and the faith they have that we are not going to bow down. That's what they say to the king and say that my God will deliver us. Right? My God will deliver me. And that's the kind of courage and boldness they have. In front of them, they are able to see that furnace which is there which is full of that fire, right? And they know there's no way to escape. But you know what? Still, they exercise this, their faith. Their faith in God. And they stood strong. And they were courageous. Because, you know what? The definition of faith. Believing in something that you don't see, right? So in front of them, what they do? They see this fire. They know if they don't bow, they're going to be killed. But they believe in something which is yet to happen, right? They believe that God can deliver them, okay? O king, but if not, let it be known to you, let it be known to you, okay, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. I, I would say like there should be some real courage that uh, they should have had. To tell to the king saying that we are not going to worship what you have created. Right? L let's say like in a workplace or a boss or manager, whoever it is, right? When they come and ask you to do something and you don't do it, what happens? <laughs> right? He's going to get angry, right? And he's going to keep uh, putting more and more pressure on you. And that's what is going to happen and that's what we are going to see here. Because what's happening is now Daniel 3.19 the Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. Full of fury and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. So the previous verse when we saw, right? We saw that the faith, they believed in God. Okay, they believed in God. They exercised their faith with boldness, with courage. Okay? And they believe that the God is able to deliver them. They had the faith. Now, going to the next level, Nebuchadnezzar now goes and threatens them even more, saying that, hey, heat up the furnace seven times more than the usual. Seven times more than usual. To bring that fear, to bring the fear within them so that they will suck up to it and they will bow down in before the golden image and worship the Lord. Not worship the Lord. Worship the image. Okay? So now, 
That's what in Daniel 3, 19 that we see. And the same thing happens even today, right? The pressure. We constantly be pressurized, right? We get pressurized to do certain things. If it's, a, if it's the will of God, then it's good. If it is not, right? Because of a superior authority who is asking us to do it, we land up doing it irrespective of whether it's God's will or not. Okay, so there's an added pressure that comes in. Even today's life, when that added pressure comes in, right? You may think, okay, things are not going your way. But you know what? If you stand firm on your faith and if you believe that God can deliver you, you know what? He will turn things around for you. He will turn things around for you. The whole community can be against you. Okay? The whole people can become against you. Let's say hundreds of people can be against you. But if you stand firm in your faith, if you stand firm in what you believe in, that God can deliver and heal you and give you that breakthrough, you know what? He's going to change the remaining 99 that's around you to be in line with you. Amen. Okay? In what you believe. Amen. Amen. Now, so the king says, okay, he's the furnace seven times. But you know what? God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not let Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego down. He did not forsake them. So Daniel 3.22 3, 22 to 23. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men. So now we are seeing here a picture saying that, seeing that those strong men who took Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to put them into the furnace, they didn't even go all the way to the furnace. But it says the flame of it killed them. The flame. Okay, that's how much the heat was over there. And what we learn from here is, if there, are, there is anybody who is turning against you, right? I hope you know where I'm going with this. So anybody who is against you, who is trying to harm you or do anything to you, you know what? You don't have to do anything, right? You just have the faith in God and let God do the rest. Right. right? He is going to get your enemies down. He's going, the people who are coming and affecting you, he's going to take care of it in a different way. Okay? So that, but you stand firm in your faith and allow the Lord's will to happen in your life. Amen. Right? Let us not jump ahead in the line to grab that will which we think it is God's will and take it into our life. Right? Let's stand firm, have that faith and let allow God to do his work. Right? And that's the faith we exercise when we believe in the Lord. So, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and these three men, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego fell down, bowed into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. You know what, what is the learning from this here? The soldiers who tried to intend harm to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, just because of the flame itself, they got killed. But with regard to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, the word of God records here saying that they fell into the furnace. They were not consumed by the flame. Right. Right? They were not consumed by the fire. Right? Even in today's life, what happens is you may have so many things going around you. Right? You might have fallen some places, right? We might have sinned in some places. But you know what? If you have a repentant heart, if your heart is turning back to God, you know what? Even in midst of that fire, He is going to keep you safe. Even in midst of those problems and troubles that you are in, He is going to keep you safe. He is going to protect you. And in a, in a, in a short bit, we'll see how God protects, okay? So fell down, bowed in the midst. So now, as you all could see, the miracle is starting to unfold here, right? The strong soldiers were killed by the flame, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell into the pit, the fiery furnace, and they were still alive, right? They're still alive. <laughs> so they've gone past the flame. They've gone to the core of the furnace where they are right now. Now, next one is God protects them. So Daniel 3, 24 to 27. The 
then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. Okay, so the miracle starts unfolding, right? Now the every king and everybody who are against these three people now, now they are starting to see something different. Okay, King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke saying to his counselors, did we not cast these three people, three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true O king. Okay, here you go. This is how the protection happens. Okay. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. Okay. Sometime back we saw only three people were put into the uh, furnace. Now where did the fourth person come from? Right? The fourth person, where did he come from? Who is this fourth person? Let's see what the word of God says. Okay. Walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. They are not hurt. And the form of the fourth, here we go, is like the son of God. The fourth is like the son of God. So in midst of the fire, in midst of the turbulence that you're having as part of your life or whatever it could be, you know what? We need to recognize there is a fourth person always there with us. Amen? He's always there with us. We may sometimes look at the problem and fear and we might be shaken. You know what? That's the work of the enemy to take our eyes off from the fourth person who is Jesus, who is there with us and instead putting our focus on the things that we fear and the things of this world. Right? And you know what? Today is the time that we shift our focus from the things of this world or the thing that is fearing us to the fourth person who is there with us. And where is the fourth person? In the form of Holy Spirit. He's inside of us, not next to us. He's inside of us. Right? He's inside of us. And when we put our trust, hope and faith that he could deliver us. Right? You don't have to worry about how it will happen. See, if Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego thought about it, right? Hey, once I put, we are put in the fairy furnace, how will we come out of it? We just saw the soldiers being burnt alive. Right? So, if they thought about it, you know what? They would have not seen a miracle because they would have doubted God. But they stood firm in their faith. They believed that their God can deliver. And they believe that God can deliver. And that's why even though they have been put into the pit, they are still alive. Not only alive, they were not hurt. Okay, let's see what it says here. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. Okay, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Wow. A king who ordered everybody to go and worship an image and other god, now he comes and say, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the servants of the Most High God. See, when you stand as a testimony for God, you know what? They don't see just your life. They see how huge our God is. And that's the testimony we carry, right? The testimony is about our personal things. But when we share the testimony of our personal things, you know who is being reflected here? God is being seen there. We are giving glory to God. That's why every time we give a testimony, we give glory to God. Because it is because of Him every miracle happens. It is because of Him every healing happens. And we need to give the glory back to the Lord. Okay. So Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. So now you see Nebuchadnezzar slowly understanding that hey, there's a most high God that is much more than the other gods and the other image and everything. Okay? Then Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego came from the midst of the fire, from the midst of the fire, not on the corner, not on the side, right in the center of the fire they were and they were coming out of it. Okay? And this and the satraps, administrators, governors and the king's counselors gathered together and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. 
Does it read anything? The fire had no power. Right? If just imagine seven times more the furnace is burning, right? And all three of them are walking in the midst of the fire. And the fire didn't have any power on their bodies. And it didn't have power on their bodies because the Son of God, the fourth person, was there with him. Fourth person was with him at that time, right? But now for us, the fourth person is within us. With them, but within us. Okay, there's a difference, right? So, is always 24 verse 7 within us, whom we can depend upon. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abraham came from the midst of the fire, and okay, this one we read this, okay. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. So bodies were not impacted. The fire didn't have any power. Forget about the bodies. The, the moment you put fire in your hair, what happens? Immediately it, uh, what, do you, what do you say that? It burns, right? But the word of God says, the hair of the head was not signed. So, sorry, not singed, nor were their garments affected. The garments. That is also not affected. And the smell of fire was not on them. So when you stand for God, when your faith is strong in God, and not only that, when you when you put your complete faith and believe that He holds our future, He's going to take care of us. Okay? When we believe in that, you know what? No matter where you're walking. No matter what kind of a situation you're walking, if it's, even if it's not favorable to you, you know what? God is going to protect you. God is going to protect you. He's not going to let you down. He's not going to, even your hair, your hair cannot be touched. Right? And not only that, even if you're walking in the midst of a sinful people, but you are having a strong faith in God, you know what? Even the smell of those environment is not going to be on you. Okay, so the, the faith plays a very important part. And we see here a testimony of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, how they exercise their faith, how they believe, how they stood for even in, this, in front of the higher authorities and they came out victorious. Not only they didn't die, not only they came victorious, they also changed the way how the higher authority was looking at things, right? Think Nebuchadnezzar, we'll look into the next coming verse here. So God turned situation around for us. Okay. Daniel 3, 28, 29. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servant who trusted in him. See the kind of acknowledgement that comes from the mouth of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. What did he see in the beginning of the verse? Nebuchadnezzar. Let me read that verse again. Okay. This is what Nebuchadnezzar said before they were put into the furnace. This is what the words of Nebuchadnezzar. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Right? Who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Is what he says. But now, after he witnessed a miracle and after they stand as a very powerful testimony, what he says here is. I missed that part. One second. Oh, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted him and they trusted the king's word. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego who sent his angel. Right? He declares that. Blessed be the Lord. And who sent angels to protect him. I know like here in the earlier words it says son of God. Here we see angel. So either way it is the Lord who is protecting them. <laughs> okay? Amen. And yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. So now he's making another decree here. What is that? That any people, nation, or language which speaks anything unless against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and blah blah blah. And then <laughs> it says they'll be killed. Okay, I don't want to read those. But the thing is, how shall we made an ash heap? Because there is no other god who can deliver like this. No other God who can deliver like this. Now, do you all believe that the same God who delivered 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego can deliver each one of us here today, tormenting us or making us worry, the fear coming and gripping us. It could be so many things. But you know what? From the word of God and from various testimony, we know that God can still deliver us. Amen. God can still deliver us. Okay. Our hands, our life, our future is in the hand of God. Okay. We need to believe that. We need to believe that. And you know what? If Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego obeyed the king, they would have not seen a miracle. They would have not witnessed a miracle because they would have bowed down before the golden image and they would have gone back. They would have been in a good, good books of the king. But they would have not witnessed a miracle. But they chose to not go, not get, um, not to, uh, they didn't want to get, uh, uh, what, what is the word that I put over? They didn't want to get, uh, because of the, I'm not getting the word quickly, but they were not shaken, by, they were not get shaken by uh, what the king was saying, right? They didn't fear the king. I mean, they didn't fear the king, but they were courageous, bold, right? And they boldly stood for their faith. The bold, the courage. How many of us have this courage today, right? Today, right? How many of us have this courage that we can stand firmly and we are going to submit everything to the Lord and let God take care of it, no matter what the outcome is. Whatever the outcome God wants to give us, I will happily accept. Can we say that? That no irrespective, even if I, whether I like the outcome or not, if it is what God's will is, let that happen. Irrespective of it. Sometimes I struggle with that, right? Because when I go and ask for, to God for anything in prayer, right? I already go with a predetermined uh, outcome that I want, right? Lord, I want this to happen. Lord, I want this to happen, right? But what does the word of God say? Let us pray. We may ask for what we need, but Lord, let your will happen. And when His will happens in our life, are we ready to accept it? Are we ready to walk by it? See, when you have that kind of a faith and that kind of a dependence upon God, okay, you know what? Anything that's that, uh, anything the enemy brings, the fear that he brings into your life, the uncertainty, right? Those will all be like nothing. It will go away. Because you are not living in the present, but you are living in the future on what God is going to give it to you, what God is going to do for you in your life. So you're putting a dependence on God. Sometimes we have to do that. Otherwise, you know what? The enemy comes and brings thoughts and slowly, a little bit of a tiny open door is enough for the enemy to come and make it a huge door. Okay? So, Put your faith, stand firm in your faith, and while we want certain things to happen, but you know what? Let the will of God prevail. Let the will of God happen in our lives. And finally, what do we see here? So in the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so they stood firm for their faith. They believed in God. They believed that God can deliver. And finally, he stood, they stood by that. And we saw King Nebuchadnezzar acknowledging their God, right? Acknowledging that. And they say he's the most high God. But not only that. Okay, those are all more on the spiritual side of it. Now we'll see. Daniel 3.30, what happens? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego get elevated. Okay? So they get promoted. <laughs> so, Daniel 3.30. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Okay? So when they started their journey with this, it all seemed like, oh, the end, their end is near. Right? But towards the end, we see they have a new beginning because of their faith. A new start, a new beginning. Okay? 
had the more higher role that the king had called him. So even in today's situation, I would say that if there is anything that's happening, right? The more we fear towards that, the more we think about it. It may be a valid thing. I know like sometimes it's very difficult to take our thoughts away from that. But that's one of the work of the enemy where he tries to keep our time and energy focused on things which is not of God. Mm. Right? We say like, oh yeah, I have this problem. Oh, I did this a few years back. Oh, this has happened in my life. Or oh, this is what is going on. Right? You know what? These are all good. I mean, I know we all go through that. But if we continue to dwell in that, that is what we receive. We receive more of those. But if we continue to put our faith in God and believe that He is going to deliver us and He will lead us, no matter what the outcome is, let the Lord's outcome be fulfilled in our life. Right? When we start thinking about that more, depending upon God more, you know what? This fear, this problems, and everything is going to vanish away. And those kind, those things will not even be of any significance for you, right? Because you're thinking of something which is huge, which is eternal, right? Which is more uh, valuable to you. What is the point of just thinking about things that is not going away? Right? There's no God thing there, right? Because God is all about how we can do things, things for God, how we can step into the kingdom of God. What we can do for God's kingdom, right? Those kind of things. And as we step into that, I believe all those healing, the breakthrough, and everything is all a byproduct of that. Okay? It will automatically happen. You don't even have to pray for it, it will happen. It doesn't mean that you should not pray for it, but you should pray. But the thing is, it will happen because you are putting your thoughts and mind into something that is eternal. Amen? Amen. 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 So that, that's a few learnings that we can have from the life of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and uh, I believe we can just call the choir. I mean, we are singing team here. We'll uh, go into a time of communion. <laughs> and uh, after the communion, uh, We'll have the team singing here and we'll have a time of prayer if we can, uh, families are here, if we can go and meet people and uh, just see what prayer needs they have. Uh, any point of time after we, even miss, after the communion, we can start walking to them and uh, we can pray for the need. So we are going to enter into a time of communion now. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood.
together it's an opportunity for us every time we come uh, for the time of communion to examine our hearts right to examine our hearts for what to examine our hearts to see the areas that we need to surrender right the areas that we need to surrender to the lord a surrender to the lord so that you can receive the full measure of healing as you take part in the communion and the sanctification okay so even as we take, lift up this bread, as we take part together, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. This is my body. Okay. And you know what? We know this body has the power to heal. The word of God says, by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Right? And this very bread that we are holding in our hand is the body of Christ, which was split for us. Split for us so that our hearts can be healed, our minds can be healed, our diseases can be healed, and anything that we think that is not getting healed can be healed in the name of Jesus. So even as we take part in this bread, let us believe in that, that every part of our body is going to get healed as we take part in this communion. And in the same way that he took a, took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant. The covenant that we have with Jesus. Which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins forgiveness of sins see even today right if there is anything even before we take part in this cup just think about it okay think about anything that where we might have sin now what is sin anything from small to big could be a sin our unbelief could be a sin not having faith in god could also be a sin so, if any of those areas, right, you know what, tonight, let us say sorry to Lord. Lord, I believe you, I have faith in you. And Lord, I believe that my sins are forgiven, no matter what it is. And even as we take part in this cup, let's believe that God has forgiven our sins. Let's take part in the cup together. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Until He comes. Even as we are going to sing the, the last song, the team is going to sing, we are just going to come over and pray for you already specific needs.
Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power. 